Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. We're back with more OCR Bone Reaper models. Today we've got the Arch Kavalos Xantos in his very fancy and impressive looking steed as he's got his after image floating around there. Now in case you aren't aware of it, you can actually build this as two different models. You've got the Liege Kavalos right here and then you have our Arch, whatever he was, Arch Kavalos, because I guess the Kavalos is a name of whatever rider dudes they are. Oh yeah, because the Kavalos are the, the cavalry. I knew that. Anyway, let's take a look inside. I'm going to build him as the Arch Kavalos, only because I like the pose of his steed better. I don't really care for his funky hat. I like the Arch one better. He's got like those crazy bone spines on his back, which I really dig, but he does have the cool sword that I'm going to have to paint as well. So I guess it's a fair trade-off. And if I ever feel like building another one, well, we'll just make him the liege. Anyway, what do we got in here? Okay. You know what? It reminds me of, this kit reminds me of the one fish dude for the, I don't know, the Edeneth that was on like the weird seahorse thingy. So you can see here we have the instructions, nice and thick. And we got about three of these half sprues for all the parts. And it looks like we're going to get a fair amount of them used. So you can see here we have bits and pieces of the mount itself. I don't know what, if it has a special name or not. We'll check that later. Uh, we have all the options over here. I've been holding on to all the little bits and pieces from the various uh, infantry sized models. Just because I figure at some point or another I'll be able to smash them all together and do something with it. Over here we have his cape. We have the armor parts and optional legs for the other version of the steed. And it looks like it's not going to be super complicated. So I'm going to grab those clippers and let's get started. And we should also mention he's got a big base. I want to say this is probably an 80 millimeter base. Does it say? No, nope. why would it? I like when they say. This is new. I haven't noticed that before where they have an actual peg either for... Uh, magnet or just to pin it in there so that's an interesting surprise anyway let's get to building so here in front of us is everything that both models are going to be using so basically at this point you have the two halves of the body and you have the front legs attached this front right leg is a very thin connection point so I actually stuck a little glue between the front armor here and the underbelly rib cage because otherwise it just was going to snap off already. Uh, what else? We attached the, if it wants to stay in focus, there, there we go. Come on, man, we just were in focus. The, I don't know, not the saddle, but the cloth underneath it the blanket type thing tabard i'm not sure if that's the right word for it anyway um this is two separate pieces that sit on a little peg on top of the mount and i think you probably could keep it completely separate i'm not 100 percent convinced on that and i'll have to play around with it once i get another one of these to build the alternate version of it but then the legs glue onto that as well. So that's going to be the same regardless of which version you're going to build. Okay. A couple of things as I get ready to move on to the next step is the hind legs are in different positions. Well, I'm sorry. These are the front legs. The front legs. No, I was right the first time. I don't know what I'm talking about. The hind legs are in different positions. And then the front legs are in different positions as well. So this is the rearing up version, whereas the Liege has his model standing on random rocks that he's prancing around on. So, sure, why not? Heads are going to be different as well. You have the two-part basic version, and it's really going to be irritated that I can't keep things in focus today. There we go. Whereas the more fancy version for the Arch Kavalos has a little fancy set of horns. Anyway, let's get those legs attached. Let's get the rest of our mount built and then we'll show it off. And I'm debating about whether I want to actually attach it to that base for once or not. 
So you can see here what a wonderful job I've done of making a mess of this model. Oh my goodness. Um, I had to cut out about 10 minutes of me swearing up a storm and just having a horrible time with this. So lo and behold, you might not want to cut all the pieces of the model out, whether or not you're filming it, because you might inadvertently attach the wrong head and then try to just smash all the parts on in an attempt to get everything to fit. Uh, that didn't really work out well, and you can see it just, nothing didn't want to stick together. And eventually I realized, well, he has this little horn right here, and that's not on the other head. Um, I, I was just trying to smash things together that didn't want to get smashed together and I've broken off this foot now completely and had to re-glue it and there's really no nice good contact point for it but I think we're okay at this point and honestly I think I might end up actually just going ahead and attaching it to the base. I don't see it being too complex. Uh, it is kind of weird that there's this weird empty spot on the underside there but I, don't, I guess you're not going to really be able to see it too much. So, and somehow I managed to get his armor to part down the middle, which was really nice. Um, and every time I try to smash it back together, it pops something else out. So I'm going to leave that be, and we're going to go ahead and finish him up. The next step is we're going to attach the other spear arm, the cape, the sword, and his head. And then we'll have the little fancy guy on the base as well. So we're moving along nicely here. All right, well, somehow I actually managed to get this guy finished, and I actually am really pleased with the results, and despite me really making a mess of things, he came out pretty decent, I think, in the end, and I'm hoping that everything decides to stay glued where it is currently. Um, his hand with the spear here just kind of popped in, and I'm hoping that I actually attached it the right way. Uh, it's debatable if I've got his head facing the right direction as well. Uh, I didn't realize it, but his harness here, the handle or whatever it's called, um, actually had completely snapped in half while it was still on the sprue. And I ended up just clipping it off because it looked really awkward. Uh, those parts that go from his harness here it's supposed to be the reins i guess would be the right word and it's supposed to attach to his hand which then attaches to the shield which then attaches to the torso and in theory that would work great in practice not so much and he's still super wobbly god um oh well <sighs> hopefully once things dry i'm gonna go back and Fix it up a little bit, clean it up, polish him up, maybe put a little bit of green stuff in there, or just leave it, I don't know. And he is quite impressive in terms of size. I mean, he's he's pretty big. He's definitely a little bit larger than his footbound cohort there. A lot more in line with the guys like the Bone Shaper, and the Soul Reaper, Mortisons. So, a little interest there. I do like he's got the typical GW spirit floating around underneath him there. And I think chain wraps would work pretty decent with them as well. Hopefully, I'm assuming whenever we get an OCR Bone Reapers Battle Tome 2.0, you know it'll happen eventually. They're going to get all the death stuff all just wrapped in together because I think it's silly that they're not all linked up as of right now other than a certain few specific units but overall i do like this model i like the pose i don't like how his hands connected to his body with the shield is this weird floaty intermediary i think that was kind of stupid uh, i'm not happy about how uncooperative his front right leg was with me but you know that could just be me that's having the issue and that spear is really long in case you're wondering but, I mean, it's a cool-looking model, and it's, it's in a very dynamic pose. And I like this pose a lot better than the Lieges with its weird, let's stand on random rocks. And I do like the spirit there. Uh, what I might do myself is if I do get a second one, which after having built this guy, I'm, I'm a little more hesitant to say I will. Uh, I'm thinking I might go with the same pose with the legs. I just don't care for the weird, I'm going to stand on random rocks on the base, but maybe leave out our spirit friend as well. 
Uh, I was hoping to keep the cloak off until I had finished painting everything, but his cloak actually is the back part of the shoulder armor as well, and he can't put the sword on his back either because it kind of slots into his spine. There's a little gap in there. And actually, that's another thing I wanted to talk about were the slots on the model. Most of the armor pieces and exoskeleton type skeletal parts here really were smooth and easy to put together. The actual core of the steed here really went together nicely. I've got to give it credit for that. It's just I had problems with everything else that I was dealing with, such as those reins and that leg, but otherwise a very cool model um, in terms of pose, at least in terms of presentation. And honestly, once it's glued, I think it'll be fine. You can always fudge it and just throw a glob of glue in there like I did. I am curious to see how he's going to stack up with the Death Riders. Hopefully I'll get them built soon. You should see them in the near future along with Katakros or whatever the big fancy dude's name is as well. We'll get it all built sooner or later. So hopefully you'll be around to see those if you are curious what these kits look like. With that said, this is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, and we'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.